integrated subdivision. So they're able to capitalize a little bit in there without actually losing the land. Next one would be the conservation offsets. That would be if you're sitting next to a piece of property where they may say we want to take this out for a, a dam or a, a large gravel pit project or something and they're going to take the whole quarter section and have it worked up for the next 10 years. They come to you and say, well, we need to mitigate the wildlife circumstances here because we're going to displace the, your quarters and pasture, your sections and pasture. What would it take for us to make a deal with you, another private, private discussion, market-based instrument, you deal with the, with the applicant and come up with a settlement that you agree to keep that land in that current use for the time frame that's required for him to put his land back into the other production when it's reclaimed again, put back to the way it was, then that would end. So you have conservation easements, conservation directives, tradable development credits, and the conservation offsets. The easements have been around, like I said, for years. The three new pieces are the directives, the tradable development credits, and the conservation offsets. All of these are available for landowners. They haven't been there before. I want to say that in reality, this is this is a first in Canada where there's actually compensation for zoning. And these other three market-based instruments are enabled through this legislation. So there's much of this that is enabling landowners to actually take advantage of situations up to this point that they haven't been able to. As a landowner myself, I look at these as an opportunity for some of us who have never had a subdivision because of the topography or where our land is to actually take part in that financial gain which many landowners have an off-farm job already and could easily use the opportunity to create a little bit more cash flow. So I think we want to take a look at all of those different pieces. Thank you. Thanks, Evan, for uh, ending on that personal note. And I'll end on a personal note, too. I look around this room, I see a lot of familiar faces. A lot of you know me uh, from uh, past political activism. And, uh, politics for me started with Preston Manning and the Reform Party back in the 19, uh, back in the late 1990s when we were fighting for Senate reform. And there are a lot of faces in the room here that helped me then. And what were the issues then? Well, it was Senate reform, but we were also uh, trying to fight the other unfair treatments of Western Canada in terms of gun registry and wheat corn and things like that. But there was one other new piece of federal legislation coming in at the time. It was called Species at Risk Act. There was going to be federal legislation that protected species at risk. Now, I wasn't against protecting species at risk if it was the burrowing owl or the sage grouse or the caribou. But if there's going to be protection, if there's going to be restrictions on private land for a public good that harms the economic value of the land, we were opposed to that. If it's a public good, the public should pay. It shouldn't be put on the pocketbook of the private landowner. And I see David Pope right over here. He's trying to hide himself from me right now. No, David, I'm not, Ted. I'm David, not trying to hide from David you. Pope, David Pope. Wrong. No, I'm, I'm going to say something nice, David. David is the one that brought me in. David I hope was so. active in starting the Reform Party uh, movement and, the and got the Reform Party focused on the property rights issue then. And I worked with David and a bunch of other people on that issue. So, fast forward to uh, 2007, and, and uh, Premier Stelmack came to me and said, Ted, all the leadership candidates agreed we need a land use framework to deal with the rapid growth that's happening in this province. Will you quarterback one? I said, Premier, I will, but on one condition, it has to be the best protection of property rights of any province in Canada. And he said, Ted, that's fine with me, because you know Ed Stelmack, he's a property owner, he's a farmer, parents, grandparents came from the Ukraine, Ed tells the story, they used to pick up the land and throw it in the air and practically cry. Why? Because they were serfs. They weren't allowed to own land in the Ukraine, right? So he, nobody is more committed, if there's one person more committed to property rights than me, it's Ed Stelmack. So I accepted that, uh, that assignment that he gave me. Through a lot of consultation we've talked about tonight, I think we put together a, prop a property rights protection package better than anything else in, the, in, the, in Canada, and better, frankly, than any other U.S. state. We're proud of it, and we look forward to defending it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ted and Evan. Uh, that's, uh, that's the government side. 
And if you happen to notice over here where I've been sitting a little puff of steam once in a while, that's Keith Wilson's pen when you put her in the glass to cool it off. <laughs> so, um, next we'll call up Don Hansen. Don is from Innisfail. He's a farmer and he's the president of the Alberta Surface Rights Group. Don. take that off. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, like I said, this is my name is Don Vesker, and I've been uh, given the pleasurable task of introducing Keith Wilson to you tonight. So, but first, I would also, I'd like to thank the Agfield Chamber, Commerce, Gilby, and Rocky Ag Societies for sponsoring this forum. I'll attempt to summarize a long and accomplished career in a matter of minutes. Keith Wilson, is a St. Albert's based lawyer with over 15 years of experience. He specializes in agricultural law and surface rights matters. He brings a unique insight into the regulatory process and the landowner rights relating to oil and gas development, environmental regulations, water rights, and other areas of law. His knowledge of increasingly complex regulatory environments that we're seeing here today and his track record in assisting farmers and ranchers are respected by both government, regulatory people, and the farming community. Keith was a lawyer representing, uh, that was dear to our hearts as a service rights group, the Lumet case that brought together a president setting compensation package for all Alberta. I had to uh, find some sort of a little bit of humor here with, for, for Keith, but he's so, he's so serious that there was a, a question was once asked if he could get a short answer. So I'll, I'll read you the quote real fast here so that everybody in the hall can understand this. His response was, uh, describe, he, they, he was asked to describe himself. I'm an Albertan with a deep respect for the past faith in the common sense of Alberta's people, and a keen optimism for the future. But I think what brings him here tonight is the last part of his quote, but I only, if we will respect and protect the things that originally made our province what it is today. Here, here. I've went through, uh, I've, known, I've followed Keith's career since he started doing surface rights issues and he's not only recognized by the farming industry, I, bought, I found a letter on, uh, through the uh, Minister of Agriculture when Shirley McClellan in 2003 commended him uh, for his efforts. Your Dedication and service to the Alberta pork industry is commendable. Dating back to your work with the farmer's advocate, your commitment to agriculture industry has certainly made a difference to our industry's success. As well, your input into legislature process has always been very much appreciated. Now there's some here tonight may not appreciate his interpretations. Our industry is very lucky to have someone of your caliber on our side. I think that speaks a thousand words for, in Keith's file. Keith is a, a family man. He's got four children at home. I don't know where he gets the time, but uh, mm -hmm. law practice and doing what he is doing for landowners in this province. He has three boys and one girl and a beautiful wife, Donna. She keeps him under control a little bit, but not much. Now, his past history. Keith has worked as the assistant to the farmer's advocate at the office of the farmer's advocate. He, his job there was one that should carry on today, but it doesn't. His job was to help landowners and agricultural organizations weave their way through the cloudy areas of the province laws and regulations and especially to stand shoulder to shoulder with farmers and ranchers, if and when a department or agency of the government trampled their rights. For you that uh, aren't aware, uh, 
Keith married the farmer's advocate's daughter. <laughs> uh, 